English? Settings, what we got? Oh my goodness, there's a lot of settings. Wow. Uh, yeesh. Okay. Nope, no, 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 not mess with that stuff. Uh, sound. Okay. Controller. Jump is B. Why is attack? We'll play around with it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Create some new data. We'll turn this up on my end. I did turn the volume up on the game. Mainly because I wanted to be able to enjoy the ambience or ambiance a little better. None the worse for wear. Did I frighten you? You can thank the priestess for my incorporeal form. Do you remember what fate befell this land? So you've lost your memories as well. Let us be rid of this place for now. It may be best for you to see the state of things outside for yourself. Can I just say that the designs, the stark design differences are great between the two. I love how incredibly what's what I'm looking for? Exquisite. The character forming is. Like there aren't many games that I can think of where the I the act of going up or down incorporates this movement. Like it's it's such a freaking it's a common thing. That if you're crouching, you your character just like doesn't squat. She goes to her full on knees. When a, a character is looking up, they just look up, kind of ostrich like with their head, but her whole body goes into it. It's really cool. Her design really is just like the light around her. It's really amazing to look at. Interesting. So, his form, that's the neat. Will my power is your own, you seem more than capable. Okay, so directional inputs don't seem to change the attacks, at least not right now. Thank you. 
Last class. Cannot dodge in the middle of an attack. Good to know. Oh, okay, so you have letters in here, too. Elaine's letter. Dear Sigrid, I want you to deliver the em del excuse me. I want you to deliver the amulet onto that white priestess. It's a necklace I bestow upon all priestesses, but I've imbued it with a blessing. I'm certain the ward will protect her from the threat of the blighted. Wards can be broken and restored, but that is something only a priestess can manage. I count on you to see this through. Yours, Elaine. Main menu. Press minus to open the main menu. All right. So you have records. A whole bunch of stuff. I don't know what it is. Uh, spirits. Okay. Alex collection. Oh, okay, okay. Findings. Okay. Okay, you had to toggle it in. Part of an amulet worn by a white priestess. The tiny shattered fragment still glows with a faint light. Up until on the blighted one as the mind and as the mind, body, and soul of those afflicted by the blight is consumed. Rot spreads throughout. This rot possesses superb regenerative properties, granting undying flesh. The link between mind and body is cut in time, and the host is driven purely by the wrath of the blight. Huh. Mm -hmm. I'm always suspicious if that game do something like this. Respites act as checkpoints. Resting will restore your HP along with spirit and prayer resources. 
resting will call forth all the defeated blight to walk the land once more. Uh huh. Okay. Using a respite will restore your status and save the game. You may now access blighted memories. Rewatch any previously viewed cutscenes that you have encountered. Been to this place. Okay, can't do anything that stuff yet. Okay, so everything res was restored, so that means. I see something that's building up. Is that blight? Okay. But what do you do with blight, I wonder? I suppose I'll find that eventually. Oh. Hmm. Work the way I thought it might. Man, just looking in the background. Wow. On the blighted too. There are blighted whose minds do not fade. This is no saving grace, however, as it is said that they must endure an eternity of pain and suffering. The miracle of the White Priestess is the only true salvation for those who come to be cursed with this blight. Glad Sir Knight has such a handy reach with his sword. Oh. 
<laughs> oh. Presume that there's a leveling mechanic that comes from me killing these things, so I'm gonna keep doing that. Interesting. Fragment acquired. Yeah, even the the, the sound design to the pitter patter steps is really neat.
findings. <laughs> findings, the parish way, one. Carriers of the rock prepared from the land of snow, bringing calamity to land's end. Said to be the ancient's revenge, the rot drove people to madness and transformed them into monstrosities. Carriers of the rot came to be known as the blood. Okay. Tainted by the blight, never to die. We call those creatures the blighted. Still we cannot do anything. There is thick with the rod of the blight. Take heed. To protect her, I must destroy, destroy, destroy. Ooh. Okay, that hurts. Ow. Oh, that is really... Okay. Okay. Was supposed to protect you. Oh. I adored the priestess of the font. She was our only hope against the immortal blighted. With unflinching resolve and a smile on her face, she epitomized radiant tenderness. My sister's letter informed me that the priestess was in poor health. It seemed the burden of her purification rituals was taking its toll. I couldn't rejoice at the peace she brought at the cost of her own well-being. Moreover, I couldn't forgive myself for not being able to protect her as a guardian. No, it was my own sister who was chosen for that role. In my darkest hour, I found solace in Lily, who was much like the priestess herself. Even if I couldn't serve as a guardian, the least I could do was protect her. But then the rain began to fall. Cries of pain rang out in the distance. The chief guardian called it the Rain of Death. I gave Lily sanctuary and took my weapon in hand. The rain never let up.
Guardian Seagreed. Swings an iron ball to attack surrounding enemies. Sub skills have a cooldown and limited number of uses, but it can be used in conjunction with other skills. Seagreed guarded the Sept to protect the White Priestess, Li Priestess Lily. Never ending bloodshed caused her to become consumed by madness. Guardian's Leap for Airborne BB. Okay. The soul has been purified, no longer imprisoned by blight. Within that memory just now, the woman called you Lily. Surely that is your name. If you retrace the memories of the blighted in life, you may just remember something yourself. It may prove difficult, but can you carry on? A rosary worn by the White Priestess Guardian. Extensive training took place underground until someone was chosen to be the protector.
Huh. Kinda curious what that stagnant blight's about. Um let's see here. Is there anywhere I can go with a double jump that I couldn't go before? Under. Find out. Nothing there. Not jump on those. Oh. Looked suspicious, but nothing there, I guess. up here? Hmm. Seems all of us suspicious.
scared me. Finding statue inscription. Stone statues in the likeness of the white priestesses. The inscription below the intact statue reads Priest Priestess of the Dawn, while the ruined statue seems to have been one of the Priestess of the Wind. Huh. Well, that is a thing to look at later, I suppose. Interesting. Well, let's see. I do love games that have settings like this. It's so much forlornness, so so much that could have gone right but didn't. Okay. Don't need to reset anything. Let us move on. So that was the secret way that I found before. This is the way I need to go. Okay, we're gonna rest there. Save. So many dead. Are you all right? Don't push yourself. Take a rest.
Hmm. Interesting. So there's like a very small portion of the song. The rain of death. Bring your own light. It's like a very small portion of the song that's been filled in. Chaos had taken the villagers long before even my arrival. But did the rain end them or the blighted? Hmm. My bond with the priestesses is a perennial one. I may not be able to lead the charge in this form, but my blade is yours. Don't look so surprised. If it made this sort of wretch to leave a child out in this horrid rain. Mm. Let us trudge on. Have you met before? It seems their cognizance faded before succumbing to madness. They don't appear to be a threat, but best keep your distance. Findings. Groa's letter. Dear Bale, thank you for your continued service in burying the White Priestess and her guardians. My son hopes to one day be as fine a coachman as you, to ride as gallantly on as fine a horse. Please do call on us when you visit the parish. Blessed be the tranquil white light, Groa, Chief Guardian. Lily may find flowers blooming with mystical power that will help her on her journey when destroyed. Red flowers. Blight breathed red f Excuse me. Blight wreathed red flowers will restore spirit uses. White flowers. The blessings of magic infused white flowers will restore spirit uses. Thank you. 
Judged what kind he was. Okay. That did not work. This pain, it's unbearable. Cliffside Hamlet Youth forms an arc, leap, and lands with enough force to scatter and damage surrounding enemies. Separated from his mother in the midst of a terrible storm, the boy set off for the White Parish in search of help. He never arrived. Don't trust this. Hold, something approaches. Oh, Or rather, it follows. I sense no clear mind. It seems to be drawn by your amulet. Perhaps they were once in service to a white priestess. 
Is there a desire to assist us? You priestesses are a rare breed. Fast travel is now accessible. Nice. Findings, the Parish Way 2. Soldiers of the nation rose to face the blighted, but struggled in vain. In the end, the prayers of the woman in white saved the kingdom. Her words, the only thing capable of purifying and stopping the blighted. Revered by the people, these, this woman came to be known as the White Priestess. What a deep forest, and almost entirely submerged. There's still so much to be done. Can be used to enhance skills. Filthy residues shed by a purified blighted. A sorrowful muck is stagnant but glints with a faint light. Allows you to enhance your skills and respites. Interesting.
Hello! Sorry, I got enraptured in the game. Good to see you, stream. How you doing? Er, Kyle. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> Thanks for jumping into the stream just now. Got a little bit uh, hung up getting eaten by dogs. My B. <laughs> but yeah, how you doing today? So it's good and you have some good weather going on. Uh, it's actually pretty nice here. Um, I'm doing well. I've actually had a bit of a marathon stream today. I started out finishing up. I'm sorry. I'm actually based out of North Carolina in the United States. I actually started today out finishing out my raid uh, Shadow Legend sponsorship and then playing a little bit of Mega Man Battle Network and now, for the first time, I'm trying out Ender Lilies. I generally only get to stream on the weekends because of my job, so I thought I would go a little crazy with it today and do a bunch more streaming. Boiled peanuts are weird. I'm sorry, that, but they, they just are. Like, I don't, I've never understood the appeal. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm somebody that's living in the South, and for some reason, I don't like boiled peanuts. It's a strange thing, but it's true. They're disgusting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Maybe, you know, I'm a, I'm a person of open mind. Maybe it's just a matter of the way that it was prepared by the people. Um, I prefer not to disclose exactly where I am, but I will say that I'm I'm on the eastern I'm on the east coast, the eastern part of North Carolina. Pri privacy is an important thing. I don't mind giving that much though. Oop. Oop. Doggo no like bath. Now, there we go. Oh yeah, Wilmington is a nice place. It's always fun to visit every so often if you get the opportunity. I feel like I'm missing a bit here. Maybe I should go back. Eh. It should be fine. I'll press onwards. Oh, I wanted to let you know too that I did download the uh, the software, and I have been playing around with it on my MacBook. Um, I haven't messed with it on here because, again, I mentioned it in the email, but I don't want to mess with my stream setup too much, at least not right now. But yeah, it's actually pretty intuitive right now. Huh. 
that's a way. This. Oh. Heal up real quick. Oh. Well, didn't quite mean to run into him, but... Sorry about that. Bad stream elements. One sec. I don't know why. Sh that's that's weird. I apologize. I don't know what it triggered. I didn't mean to time you out there. Give me one moment here. Do I have a... Can I... Hmm... First time I'm actually, sorry, first time I'm actually dealing with somebody that, you know, wasn't a bot triggering it. I don't know how to untime you out, like, unless it's just a matter of time, just letting it go. But, let's see. Let me pull up my bot real quick and see what happened there. One sec here. Um, there's gonna be updates every time. There's a stream deck, there's push of morale. Oh, sorry, sorry. I guess that was a uh, default on stream elements. Apparently, it automatically times out people with lengthy messages. Blah. Okay. That is gone. That shouldn't happen again. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I have the setting to where I can still... I can still see the messages. It just shows a strikeout. Because I hate that it, the default was just saying that you were timed out and that's all it said. But yeah, I, I did see your message, and you've got updates every two weeks. Uh, I do look forward to the stream deck, because I gotta be honest, I don't really use mine too much right now. I look forward to implementing it better, honestly. It kind of, I don't know, I guess I'm simple, I guess I'm still too small, but I don't have a use for like a ton of different transitional buttons and whatnot. But I would like to you know, beta test and try it out with your program once it's out. Uh, I've only played with it a little bit so far. I would say I gave it probably about an hour or so. I got it. I do have to say like right off the bat, one thing I do like about it is it takes the, the openness of OBS in terms of or OB stream elements live that this obs clone thing uh it takes the complexity of it and drops it down some and i like that a lot the au the audio mixer is definitely one thing i'm a fan of because i run into that problem a lot maybe i'm just not intuitive maybe i don't know which is possible but a lot of times i'm having to manually like turn off audio or adjust it and not really comprehensible ways you know a little slider bar that's supposed to be volume but it's measured in decibels for example for an audio file or for somebody that's a musician or something that makes sense they, they get what that means for me I'm just blindly adjusting this thing assuming that it's doing a thing but in your program it looked like you had a much more intuitive slider for it and I really appreciate that design Now I did, I did have a question though. I haven't, again, I've played with it very little so far, but I wanted to ask, uh, does the software actually 
deal with the issue of Mac not letting audio out. I don't know if that's even possible, to be honest, but having to run third party software and drivers and all this stuff to be able to do what a Windows user does intuitively is kind of ridiculous. If you can't do it, that's fine. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how do how do I say this about the the audio mixer? When I'm playing something and somebody says to adjust the audio because it's either too quiet or too loud, half of the time, I'm incapable of realizing immediately what they mean by that because on the one hand you have a mixer bar that shows green yellow and red for decibels or you know how it's pu punching through but then you have a blue bar which apparently adjusts how that bar works in a fashion i don't quite understand but then on top of that you have the monitoring and output and monitoring off and all these other advanced settings nice I really look forward to that because <laughs> sound sources, it sounds sources the thing it works, but it's kind of clunky. Ooh, Vin oh wait, Vin um, one sec here. Isn't Venture the current one? I, I am so far out of the loop here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Ventura. Okay, yeah, I, I always try to keep my stuff up to date as long as it doesn't um, interfere with like the system as far as imperfections like bugs or whatnot. Yeah, it, it actually kind of drove me crazy. Uh, some of the stuff I've been wanting to do for streaming, I'm like looking up how to do things and I'm like, okay, so I just need to download this software and then install this thing. And then I download the software, and then it says, oh, it only worked on Catalina. And I'm like, really? Really? Uh, yeah, uh, if I, as I've got time, like during the weekend stuff especially, I won't be necessarily going live because of my job. Uh, I have unstable internet and I'm traveling constantly. But I definitely plan on messing around with the software more while I'm on the road so that I can just play around and see how it operates and you know maybe I'll break stuff maybe I won't but I'll let you know though I'll definitely give you a write up back on once I've gotten some thoughts built up around it ideally if I can get it to work correctly with my uh, MacBook Air and it seems like it's not taking too much CPU or anything like that then I might uh, put that on here and try it out on my mainstream and see how it goes or mainstream this is my only stream my main machine because <laughs> uh, i'm running a mac studio so if the macbook air can run it with good efficiency i think i'll be good to run it on the studio i think it'll be just fine Oh yeah, 100% it's Apple's issue. A Apple has rebuffed the entire industry by saying that they wanted to keep their systems closed circuit on that. Like, I'm not a huge fan of my voice. I'll just be upfront about that. I, you know, plan on taking voice lessons and learning how to change it and all this other stuff. But in the meantime, you know, there's options like voice changes and stuff like that. And... The best one in the industry, in my opinion, which I don't even remember the name right now, it's escaping me. But the best one in the industry, or at least for my personal uses, is fantastic. It has sliders, it has adjustment knobs, it has preferential savings, uh, uh, save positions, all kinds of cool stuff that makes, you know, changing your voice at the drop of a hat super easy and intuitive. And then I tried to figure out how to install it from Mac and the blunt answer that was given by the company themselves is no we're not dealing with Mac 
we're, we're just going to stick with Linux and Windows because Max design is dumb. And I was just like, well, crap. That's unfortunate. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. I do. I do try to improve my quality where I can, but I admit that it is. It is hard. This is actually the longest stream I've done so far at let me pull up my exact number. Yeah, at seven and a half hours, this is the longest stream I've ever done. Before this, I think the longest I did was about four ish hours. But you're very kind though, I appreciate that. Um wor worth asking, because I don't remember if we still find a roadmap to allow VST3 support. Okay. Um if I could ask actually what that is. And I know it's silly that I'm a streamer and I don't know the tech, but I I feel like I'm trying to learn, you know, the last twenty years of audiophile knowledge in my quest to just be a decent streamer <laughs> but um uh, what was I saying what was I saying I, I done forgot what I was going to say there yeah that doesn't happen too often <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I do look forward to getting better um, equipment usage. I know that one thing I plan on playing around with that I bought recently, right now, just to l give you my technical specs, because um, you're you're more in tune with this stuff. VST3 plugins are industry standard in the audio world. So things like reverb, delay, vocoders, etc. are all VSTs, and VST3 is the newer, smarter version of them. Oh, okay. Well, funny you mention that, because currently I'm actually using a uh, Focusrite Solo uh, Gen 3 2i2. And um, because I was trying to find something to, you know, adjust my voice, because unfortunately, hardware wise, this doesn't do much for your voice. It, it is pretty straight out a XLR mic connection with the ability to pick you up and with like one or two options. But not much fanciness or customization wise one of the things that i actually bought that i haven't used yet and i was going to try and set up was a uh, roland vt4 yes the Sologen 3 2 uh 2 by 2. i primarily got it because i'm actually learning uh bass guitar on the side and i'm not going to subject people to that until i get better at it but I wanted to have something that had some uh, some growth potential where I could plug in something else into a second outlet and be able to work on the audio side of things. I figured I was I'd be limiting myself too much by having a singular XLR port XLR port on something. Oh, and to, as I'll say. You know the real the real one complaint I have about the uh, the Focusrite Solo Gen Gen Two I Two specifically is they have a software for it that's called Focusrite Control, and it allows you to adjust minimally your input settings for like your microphone and stuff through your computer, and there's an output section that would be fantastic to be able to route for audio purposes especially inside of a mac environment being able to just run things from the the uh the interface directly through to whatever application you need and you can do that when you're plugging stuff into the device that's a fantastic idea and i read up a lot of guides on it my only issue or its only issue is the 2i2 doesn't have that that option it is just a singular output that goes into the Mac via USB-C. It does not have the ability to be routed. It's not a game breaker for me, but I was a little bit disappointed to learn that. All of their other models have it, but not that one.
Yes, I have the uh, Roland VT4. Because again, I'm not terribly comfortable with my voice, and I'm not I'm not really comfortable with the fact that the Scarlet, again, is kind of bare voice. It's. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I can. That requires more tuning and more work like that. That's actually why I got the VT4 because, to be quite honest, I got tired of jumping through a hundred hoops on Mac to get anything to work. That's actually why I went the hardware route with the VT4. For that reason, because I tried getting the um, what was it called? Voice mod, I think. I downloaded that and tried it out. And then that ended up turning into nothing because, um, well, it kept getting lost in all the applications between the black hole, uh, channels, between the sound source, between the, the focus, right? Between everything sound was just going into the void <laughs> and I couldn't, I, I spent hours and days trying to figure out where it was going to with that voice recorder. And I just, I gave up. And I just went the hardware route, and here I've got a VT4, and I'm very excited to start messing with it. The trick is that I'm not home for four days out of the week, so I get only the weekends, essentially, to get anything done. But that's actually why I was excited to beta test your software, because that's something that I can just download natively to my Mac, or my MacBook Air, and then do it. Honestly, if you ever need any help or any questions, it's time to shoot me an email. We have loads of help from people streaming. Okay, absolutely. Um, if I come up with questions, I'll definitely make sure to ask you. Uh, no, it's an M2 MacBook Air. Uh, my my current uh, systems that I have, I have an M1 Mini that I'm not using right now. Uh, I actually upgraded to the studio for a lot of reasons, but part of it was the mini had a, some weird hardware glitch kind of stuff like stuff that didn't make any sense, but there was just something deep in the, in the programming that wasn't working right with streaming stuff. I, I kind of can't explain it beyond that, but there were hangups and there were glitches and there were lockups that had no basis in anything that I could find, but it happened. So that's where I got the studio to handle everything. But anyways, though, I have an M1 Mini, I have the M2 Air, and then I also have the uh, M1 Max uh, studio. I thought about getting the Ultra. Oh, wait. Do I have that backwards? I do I do tend to do that sometimes. Uh, Max. Okay, yeah. I thought about getting the Ultra, but that thing was insanely expensive. <laughs> I, I've always I've actually always been a Mac person to be honest um, it was just out of my price range for the longest time it's because of work picking up and actually getting you know getting planted in a place not having to move and all that stuff and just having a better life circumstance that I was able to put the stuff on like credit and stuff and not necessarily worry about not banging it off. Also, being that I'm trying to get up into uh, being an affiliate and stuff like that, I in fully intend on taking what I can and uh, doing tax tax write-offs. Yeah. <laughs> but all of that's kind of the nitty gritty of why I'm doing it. The the more like open idea and honesty is that. I just want to be there to support people. That's really why I'm streaming. I thought about taking it in for testing, but what I found is that um, I, th I actually do think it's still under warranty and all. However, it's like three hours to get to a Mac store. It it's pretty far out. Let's see if I can do it from here. Nope, it does not work that way. Yeah, the the Mac Mini, I mean, it worked. 
in general outside of that, so I wasn't stressing it too much. I just decided that it'll be a lightweight uh, unit for anything I'm doing, as opposed to like my stream machine. It's a note I'll definitely look into. Um, if nothing else, I will say I've, I actually kind of had plans of setting up a musical area to be able to do like guitar stuff and whatnot later. Um, oops. And I was thinking about like setting up the mini in that environment to do that stuff. But that's all future plans. Right now, I'm actually just very happy in, in how the studio is working. So like the audio which is great uh was there anything that didn't set well with you when you were playing around with meld um i think it's a bit of uh adjusting to where things are right now i don't know where everything is like or not everything but just general functionality but i think that primarily falls into the fact that i just haven't done much with it yet um, you know, learning new menus and stuff like that is always a task, but it's not anything necessarily bad. Um, yeah, I think it's it's probably more along the lines of just refamiliarizing and just learning how the software runs. You know what I mean? So far, though, as far as like the install process and booting it up and everything. All of that was a cinch. That was super easy. In fact, like I said, you know, I want to play around with it and get better with understanding it. And I would actually love at some point to be able to broadcast the fact that that's what I'm using is Meld. Because if there's one thing that kind of drives me batty, it's the fact that it's literally OBS or nothing on M1 software and even for uh, OBS they're on the back foot they're trying to catch up but they're not they haven't managed to optimize yet in fact a funny thing about uh, running OBS Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and anytime I come up, anytime I come up with uh, suggestions or concerns or anything, I'm I'm a very very mellow person, so I try to find the correct way to say the things that I want to say, as opposed to just like blasting it. It's probably why I'm not popular on Twitch yet because I'm not a blastcaster. <laughs> But yeah, anything that comes up that I, I appreciate with how it works or anything that I'm not sure of, I try to do my best to write down exactly the problems I'm having or describing it in some way and then submitting it. Because just being like, hey, there's no worky worky is, um, yeah, doesn't want to do much for anybody. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. Since I do have your email and all that, I'm definitely going to make sure. Uh, like I said, I'll probably play around with it tomorrow, actually, and see how it works, and just kind of get a better feel for how it runs. And I'm, I am part of the Discord too, by the way. I haven't said anything in there, but I do lurk in that Discord, so I'll be checking there if I have any issues first. And if I don't see anything that matches what I'm having problems with, if I am then I'll, I'll submit emails and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a person when I first was setting up the M1 Mini for streaming. 
I wish I was exaggerating, but I swear to you that it was like I was the only person on the internet trying to use an M1 for uh, VTubing. It, the struggle was real, trying to find technical know-how for half, even, not even half, a quarter of the problems I was having at the time. It, it, like, no exaggeration, I've only started streaming about a few months ago, I think. But the truth is, I've actually been trying to set up just to stream for over a year. Like, the M1 Mini's release was when I was first considering it. And then I started dabbling with software and dabbling and learning things. And then just, I was hitting my head against the wall after a while. It's just like, well, I would love to use that software, but it doesn't work. I'd love to use that software, but it doesn't work. And it's just, erg. <laughs> and sometimes the bug, someone believes someone perceiving something that doesn't work and show that there's something lacking in the UX design. That's true. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm, a, unfortunately, a very frequent victim to auto correcting. I yeah, <laughs> I I understand what you said there. It's fine. Um, yeah, no, you're you're 100 right. A lot of my setup with OBS was clicking on the thing, saying maybe this is it, and then deleting it because it wasn't, like a hundred times over. And then the biggest, the worst experience I've had with OBS was I was actually doing an audition to join a VTuber group. And I was just like, all right, this is the weekend right before it's due. Let's make the audition video. And I sat down and I started up my computer and I started OBS and there was nothing there. Kylie Gager is now following. Yay. Thank you for the follow, Kyle. But yeah, I I started up OBS and there was nothing there. It was a blank screen and I just had a heart attack. I was just like, oh my God, what? No. And turns out OBS and in their infinite wisdom does not automatically like back up anything. So when OBS took one too many spinning wheels of death to the face, it just brain lost and forgot everything. It went totally amnesiac on me. And so the day of trying to submit my uh, application to them and my video, four hours before the deadline, I was rebuilding the entire OBS system. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, def I definitely could use the, the boost. Um, you know... Unfortunately, having a full-time job that takes four days completely out. Yeah. Yeah, my, my fights with OBS have been pretty vicious. Like, I I am paranoid now where I, I back up my stuff every time I stream. Before and after. Because I do not want that to happen again. That was... I'm pretty sure I lost about a year of my life in stress trying to fix all that. And in the end, I didn't get accepted into the group, but I mean, that's fine. I put my name out there. I tried, but it was more the fact that it couldn't have been an easy process. And that, that's why I'm actually really hopeful and excited that your software or your group software is going to be a game changer because I'm kind of tired of being a Mac user and just the conventional wisdom of, oh, well, Mac is like, nobody uses it so why would we develop for it or it's too difficult to develop for i'm getting real tired of hearing that because the mac the mac hardware is crazy good it is like especially money like dollar to dollar on investment it's insanely powerful this mac studio you know full disclosure i did get it with a type of discount this mac studio was like twenty six hundred dollars but I'm also here to let you know that this $2,600 Mac Studio probably can do more than a $3,000 PC can with none of the having to upgrade parts or anything. It just comes in that way. You know, and that's just wild. I love that. So 
it'd be great when people finally stop, you know, being on their high horses about how nobody uses Mac for whatever stupid reason they have to say. So that's why I'm hopeful that Meld actually gets some traction. Or even if it doesn't necessarily get traction, but it does get out there to the Mac community. That would be great. Because something that's built natively for Mac, I think, is the key to the, the situation. Because OBS is doing their best to try and build a, a Mac version, but it's like, eh. True. That is so true. Don't get me wrong, by the way. I, I, I have more software than I know what to do with. Just being honest. Like, if I was home all the time and worked from home or whatever, I would be dabbling in all kinds of stuff. Like, I do have Final Cut Pro and I've got Logic and all that. Again, got them on sale. But, yeah, it's, it's really not true. Producing music on Mac might be easier in some regards. But then you run into the problem we were talking about earlier of, you know, Mac doesn't want their audio sourcing to go anywhere but inside the Mac and that just completely kills the ability for something like GarageBand or Logic or anything that's more you know geared to max peripherals to get out there oh yeah no I agree I mean my first gaming laptop funny sorry my first gaming laptop was actually a uh, MacBook Pro back in the day and that thing was insanely beefy for its time. I mean, look, my, my desktop, I played World of Warcraft and my desktop was like, okay with it. Don't do, don't be too crazy. The MacBook Pro was like, okay, so we're running World of Warcraft. That's cool. What else did you want to do? Oh, no, no, no. I'm fine. Really? I, I'll sit here and just run World of Warcraft on this side of the screen. And then you go do whatever else it is you want to do, and uh, nobody cares. It's fine. You know, that that's what really caught my eye about how strong Max stuff was. And that was in the pre-M1 era. The pre-Silicon era. So yeah, 100%. That's why I got the Mac Mini when it came out. You know, buying a monitor or something to plug up to it as a display, that is cheap. That is insanely cheap. If you're trying to go for high quality, I guess, sure, but... Okay, so this is actually on Switch. Um, the reason I actually have this set up this way is because I have a crap ton of Switch games that I, I like playing with the Switch's controls. I do have the capability of like buying stuff on Steam and all that, and I do have a lot of Steam games, but... I'm going through my Switch library and just broadcasting it through an HD60S Elgato. Excuse me. HD60S Plus. The only one that works on Mac. And I'm running that into the studio to be able to capture the Switch on its dock. By the way, if there is, I will say, if there is one actual Achilles heel to... Uh, the M1 system it's max Mac going a little too far into the future a little too fast because unfortunately 32-bit processing is completely out the window anything from that era is unsalvageable to play on a Mac and that that's really unfortunate like uh, even parallels desktop you can't do it you, you cannot run a 32-bit OS. And that's unfortunate because I actually was, you know, with the release of Diablo 4 coming up in the future, I was actually pretty excited to go back to the roots and to play it. And that's when I learned that, um... Yeah, yeah. I, my, my wife has a few art peripherals that are the same way, unfortunately. But, yeah, I was interested in Diablo 4 coming out, and I was like, you know, let's go and start back at the beginning here. 
Uh, Diablo 1, okay, Blizzard doesn't have that on anything. They gave up on it. But Galaxy Gamers has it. Okay, cool. It works on Mac. Good deal. So that was a thing. That was pretty easy. And then I'm like, all right, Diablo 2. Man, I love Diablo 2. I cannot wait to play it. Oh, it's not on Mac. They didn't develop it for Mac. Why? I have no idea. It's dumb. It is such... Every other game they have is Mac compatible, I think. But not Diablo 2. And I'm talking Diablo 2 or the remastered version. So then that's when I found out going through Parallels that uh, because it's ARM processor, 64-bit, uh, that not even through Parallels could you run Diablo 2. Diablo 3 is fine, by the way. That was Mac, That was on Mac too, so that was fine for Mac as well. But yeah, no Diablo 2 for me. I had to go buy it on my PlayStation to be sad that I couldn't do it on stream. Or if I wanted to do it on stream, I'd have to go through the, the mess of bringing my PlayStation up here from the living room. You're definitely correct on that. Uh, it's a trend that is slowly, and I mean very slowly, changing up. But for the most part, you're still accurate on that. I mean, what, what's what's actually crazy is like even in a game like Final Fantasy XIV, which was you know built immediately to be up for Mac and for PlayStation and for PC. You know, Mac M1 came out. And their initial response to the M1 was that they just weren't going to develop for it. It's just outright, we're just like, hey, we're not going to do that. And so people had to then go to outsourcing to third party uh, mods and stuff like that and software launchers to be able to play on, M on the M series Max. And it was just ridiculous. I've heard that they've since come around on that. But yeah. Wow. <laughs> I must admit, I've always wanted to be part of the 1%, but not like this. <laughs> Man. You know, I think you might have actually just made my day with that knowledge that I managed to tough through this. <laughs> That, that is excellent. I love that. I mean, it makes you sad, but it also makes me proud that I got through. <laughs> be part be part of the half a percent. <laughs> oh, man. That is funny. You're kind of one percent. <laughs> you you know what's actually really funny is, for as uh, much as Mac gets talked down on for this kind of things, it seems like nobody has any problem at all using their iPhone for things. Like even in the V2 community, you know, right now I don't have a webcam. I have my iPhone tracking me, and. It's funny how people are just like, yeah, no, Mac is terrible, man. Why would you have a Mac? Oh, what? My webcam? Yeah, I totally use an iPhone 11. I mean, why wouldn't I use anything else? And it's just like, hmm. Hmm. But for most people that never clicks that the same company that they're bad mouthing about their PCs is their absolute must go to for their phones. <laughs> Let's see. 
Open is the place for sorcerers who seek deeper knowledge of magic and the abyss. We help the jointly established White Parish and aid in blighted eradication when needed. You must meet the approval of multiple sorcerers to join. Researching forbidden arts such as the magic of the ancients, wielding a weapon in a tower, and leaking intel to other nations are prohibited. Oh, interesting. By the way, another nice thing about my setup, you were asking about uh, what I was playing this on. Having the Switch sitting... Hmm? Oh yeah. Totally said the price and point of Mac can be a salary to reach for other people, but I'd also argue my Mac once every six to seven years be always working with a fully capable computer. With few exceptions, you were 100% right on that. I, I bought one of those um, Asus, Asus gaming computers like several years ago and that thing was out of date or practically not working within like two years of having it. It was bonkers bad. And Mac, unless Apple does something ridiculous, revoking some ancient thing that they didn't need to get rid of, they do unfortunately uh, in general it just keeps getting better one of those things I'm talking about by the way is the 32 bit like when they decided to say no more 32 bit on our on our hardware they were I don't know what they were thinking they were going to do but what ended up happening was even more of the industry just veered right away from them and said well you guys are too much to work with Instead of, you know, progressing forward. But, yeah, I completely agree with you, though. Like, that M1 Mac Mini I've got, even with a few of the weird, you know, issues it has, it still otherwise runs just fine. And that thing is going to run for a long time if I need to use it for something. I might have to use it for, you know, not as important tasks or not as complex things. But nothing saying that I can't use it at all. And that's a lot more than I could say for most PCs that aren't like four thousand dollars. Get a drink of water real quick. Well, this the CD drive was kind of was kind of ridiculous, but it also wasn't an impossible fix because I like, can get USB um, CD drives and all that. But 32-bit is just immediately removing capacity to so many things. It's it just didn't make any sense. Yeah, same. I'm actually looking at mine. I've actually got an external Blu-ray that I bought because I'm like, this is going to be important and useful. And then, not really. Very, very, very situational. But I mean, I have it, I guess. That's the thing. <laughs> say I've got a lot of friends uh, and family actually that were talking about how much they love this game and I definitely can see why it's really pretty I also love the music for it too
this real quick. Wah. That was not expected. Okay. Ugh. It has that Mary Poppins melody running in my head. <laughs> I think there's something up there. This feels like a boss. Yep, this is a boss. Ow. Oh. Hard fight. Thanks. Now nah, get out of here, Pidgey. Nobody will want you anyway. Thanks. Bungle Sorcerer. Generates a toxic mist that reduces enemy health over time. Damage from the mist cannot be blocked. The sorcerer learned much on his travels beyond the bounds of Land's End. Despite his return home, he never did make it to the coven where his lover waited. Hmm. Lover's letter. To my darling, upon reading your letter, I have decided to return. I have seen and learned much on this half-year journey outside the coven. I ache to tell you of the scorching at sand dunes, strange creatures, and so much more. I will be back soon with your souvenir. All my love, Melville. Oh. I do like how I was like, oh man, this looks like a boss arena. Not even a second later. Yep, it's a boss arena. It's Are you good for? Okay. So I've enjoyed popping in here, but getting late here in Berlin, I need to give my dust buster smelling dog a bath. <laughs> Love to keep the conversation going and keep getting feedback from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even if I don't share emails necessarily, I will definitely be in the Discord watching stuff. And if anything comes up, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely keep in contact with you. And thanks for stopping by. It was nice having the chat. Yeah, get your get your dog a bath so it's not smelling like a dust buster. And get you some sleep. This music is also giving me some corpse party vibes. 
Huh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to um, impose anything. I know it's it varies by discords, but I didn't want to impose a stream. But uh, if I have your permission to do so, absolutely. Definitely one of my tenets of my stream is I'm trying to build a community for people to just kind of hang out and, you know, get to know more people. It's not just about secluding myself to one side of the internet and everybody come with me. I want people to know about other great people too. So if that if that's okay to let everybody know in the stream or in the Discord, absolutely. Since the VTuber community came about, I've actually spent a lot of time is spending my time encouraging people because I don't the money the money and all that stuff is one thing I guess, but I don't think it's necessary to put down other people or to try and shoehorn people away from other people just to make a community happen. You know, I'm not about that. I'm, I'm about being like, yo, man, did you hear about this awesome VTuber? Their stuff's awesome. We should go check. You should go check them out sometime and just let, you know, let the recommendations roll. It drives me crazy that every VTuber I know is like, Hey, I've got a Discord. Come check it out. And then one of their first rules is don't promote other VTubers. And it's just like, come on, man. <laughs> so I'm I'm actually building my own Discord right now. My wife's helping me. And that one, I, that's definitely not a rule I'm gonna have. I'm actually gonna have like an entire section dedicated to, you know, shouting out other people that I think would be great to watch. Because I think that's how you actually make a community work. That's how you make the entire thing better. Point in fact, by the way, just a quick story. I know you said you got to go, but um, that audition that I tried out for with that uh, VTuber group, while I was turned down for being one of their talents, one of the things they actually mentioned to me is that they'd be interested in bringing me on as like a community manager because of that vision. And I'm like... Okay, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> so definitely post your link in the stream with Meld channel. You got it. Going forward, I'll make sure I drop a link there whenever I'm going live. I say it is nothing but a win. I can share my experience with others, build a community. I mean, yeah, it's all good. Birds. Oof. No, the bird anticipated me. Uh, the VTuber thing in agency? Yeah, it, it was. I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, disclose what it was and all that stuff, but it was an agency. Um, definitely not one of the big ones or any of that stuff. I, well, to be honest, I don't have the chops. I don't have the knowledge or experience to try and go into something like that. So I was looking at a smaller group. I'm still in great terms with them and all that, so it's not too big a deal. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, it, it's an agency that I've been following their talents for a while and was showing a lot of support for them and all that. And like I said, still on good terms with them. No, no harm, no fouls or anything. I just thought, you know, I, I'm honored by the idea of being a community manager for them and I'm not turning that down. But also, you know, I want to try and stream myself, so that's why I'm here. You know, I know I'm already breaking immersion with all the stuff I've been saying, but 
real talk, there's enough darkness, there's enough pettiness in the world. I'd rather be here and make people happy and make people smile and direct people to other people that can make them happy than to spend my energy and my time on bad things, you know? And on one one note in particular, you know, as somebody that is tra is is trans and has a trans wife and a trans son, uh, that's a very very heavy topic. That's very very important to me. And to be honest, that's one of my guiding fuels. Is that's all the more reason to bring positivity and positive reinforcement in the world, and also to you know protect people. So that's, that's at least half of the reason why I'm even streaming because I want to be able to invoke that kind of virtual sp safe space to be in where they don't have to worry about random nasty people making their day worse. But anyways, though, I know you said it's getting late, so hope you uh, have a great night. Hope your dog appreciates what you do for it. <laughs> Damn, why do you crows hurt so bad? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree, and it's it's a delicate balance as a streamer, but I encourage I, I encourage people to acknowledge the truth of what's happening, the the tragedy of it, but I don't want it to be something that makes people sad, like consistently, because honestly, the rest of the world is already full of, full of that emotion. It, it's difficult to do and that's part you know one man is an island or however that saying goes I'm terrible with metaphors but anyways that's really a thing is even if I create a great community and people know about it and people feel safe and welcome there regardless of you know whatever they are or whoever they are that's great but let's just be completely honest in the fact that one person is not able to reach out to everybody that that really is the core belief behind why i want to interface with more people more vtubers more streamers and link out to those people and let those people know they're welcome in my area as well as in their area that way we're not just singular spots of okay it's safe to be here without worrying about myself being judged rather here's an entire list of creators i know i could go to and not worry about you know being derog having derogatory things thrown at me or insults or anything that you know of that nature happening that's what i would like i would like to be part of, of that effort
Well, that's certainly a hope is t that people will become less judgmental, but we're, we're at a stage realistically of, I just want people to be safe and being where they are online at least that's the most i can do for that you know trying to to change others opinions is a difficult task to do and it's a worthy task to do but we're currently at a stage of i just want to do what i can to protect the people that are in imminent harm at least in the ways that i'm able to to do so But anyways, though, so back to, you know, friendlier topics, as it were. Um, oh, man. I, I'm not going to lie. I appreciate the offer. I've always wanted to go to Germany. Absolutely. Like I said, you know, ha have a great night. Thanks for stopping by and chatting with me. It was always fun. And I'll definitely be around in the Discord and let you know what I come up with. Have a good night. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> Okay. Okay. 
riche. One relic. Okay. Oh, that was rough going. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's just try going across this time. that way dodging isn't really a thing. Mm. Menace's ring slightly increases spirit uses. A relic left behind by the ancients and kept in the coven. Once treasured by a woman found fond of flowers. An enchantment on this old ring causes it to glow when held by a white priestess. Nice. Stronger and stronger. Oops. Eh. There we go. Oh, okay. 
haven't explored this all that now. Alrighty. Now that didn't go anywhere. Here you go. This goes somewhere. It has to get a save room. No, it's not a boss room. What? Huh. I wonder if there's some way to dive. No? I guess I can't do anything there yet. time is it? It is four something. Four thirty. Okay. Well, I'll play a little bit farther in and then go map it up and see. Uh, there's still other areas I want to check out though. That's fine. Sorcerer's Notes. I've been studying the text of the ancients, and it appears that there is the possibility of a connection between the blight and one particular branch of their, of their magics. If we could decipher more of the old text found in the blighted lands, we could pursue this thread further. Okay, 
cannot jump past this. I don't know why I keep doing it. Ow. point like I feel like I just yep just want a huge circle man ah oh, jeez okay oops oh glad that didn't kill me Knew it. Freaking knew it. I was very sus suspect that there was one somewhere. Ooh, chain of sorcery. It's an additional relic slot. Nice. Ah! Ah! He got me when I hit the button. Dang it. Oh, that's okay. Now I can equip a new relic. Actually, I, I, was, I wasn't really planning to end there, but that's fine. <laughs> 